Isaiah chapter 58 and verse 1 says this, cry aloud and spare not. Lift up your voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. Cry aloud and spare not, the prophet said. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, we know it familiar from the opening verses that talks about no, to know this and the last day's perilous times shall come. But this, this morning I want to look at verse 12. 2 Timothy chapter 12, or chapter 3 verse 12 says, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. We talked about that a few weeks ago. But verse 13, look closely with me. But evil men, listen, do you know that there are evil men? I can see your face. It's not dark in here. So, you've heard me say before, I heard the old preacher one day say, if you can't give me a Pentecostal shout, an Episcopalian nod will do. How many of you know there's evil men? How many of you know the context of this chapter is last days? By a show of hands, how many believe we're in the last days? By a show of hands, how many of you believe we're in the last of the last days? So who is this chapter talking to? Us. But evil men and seducers, that means imposters, shall wax worse and worse. What does that mean? They're going to progress from bad to worse. It's not getting better, church. It's getting worse. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue you in the things which you have learned and have been assured of. How many of you have assurance this morning? Knowing of whom you have learned them. And that from a child you have known the Holy Scriptures. Which are able to make you wise to salvation. Through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All Scripture. Somebody say all all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be, may be perfect, that means adequate in that context, thoroughly furnished for all good works. How does the man of God become Mature and adequate and thoroughly equipped. The Word of God. This morning, I'm going to preach a very straightforward message. I want to give you warning that I am after every idol that I can find. That I'm out to expose every lie that can have light shed on it. It may offend some sensibilities. In fact, I'm sure it will. I want you to know that's never my goal, but the Word of God, is, is, that's what it accomplishes. It exposes lies and adds light to darkness. It is the only thing we have to expose truth. Without the Word of God, there is no truth. Psalm 119 says, Thy word is truth. Who's the word? In the, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. And the same was in the beginning with God. Verse 14 of chapter, John chapter 1 says, And the word became flesh and dwelled among us. Jesus himself said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The truth is a man, Jesus Christ. The, the, tr the man is, is, is inseparable from the word because he is the word. 
In in John's epistles, he said that these three shall remain forever, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. The Word is our standard. It's time the pulpit stood up. You've heard me make that statement. It's time. There is a lie that has circulated through American society now for decades that says that, that there's no place for in, in the political world, that there's no place in the world outside of the four walls for the pulpit, for the Bible, for, for Christian faith. That's a lie. You stand in a country today, sitting in Mauriceville, Texas, United States of America, in a country that was founded on the principle that I can worship God any way I please and openly. That didn't come from political leadership. That came down through one of the greatest influences on on what we have today was the pulpits, the preachers that came to this country to get out from under the crown. Nobody even says that anymore. I'll insert something right here that just for funsies. I read the other day where Canada has banned all kinds of weapons. I'm not here to talk about guns, but I want this that it makes a point. And you know, the media is breathlessly reporting this enlightened decision from Canada. I will remind you that Canada is still under the crown. I'm not interested in what a people that never wanted to get free and wanted to get independent from the, their oppressor has to say to me that was born in a country to a people that stood up against the oppression that spilled their blood that was willing to fight and die so I can stand here this morning and proclaim freely the word of God I don't care what people that are st- still under that oppression had to say while I'm at it I don't care what Barbara Streisand Brad Pitt or anybody else in the, in the Hollywood elite that are living like trashy devils has to say either. I don't care. I don't care. Neither should you. You should care what thus saith the Lord has to say. If I had a title this morning, the title would be this. Let them eat cake. Let them eat cake. Some of you know. Some of you have no idea. Some of you get it already. Some of you are wondering what in the world the preacher's talking about. Let them eat cake. I'm talking about out of touch leadership. I'm out, I'm talking about oppressive governments. I'm talking about it. That quote is largely attributed to Marie Antoinette, who when the people of France were starving to death in the streets, they brought their plight to, to, to the royalty, to the crown, and said, your people are starving. They have no bread. And her response was, let them have cake. Or more accurately, brioche. What does that mean? There was, brioche was a, an expensive bread. Butter and expensive ingredients. What are you talking about? I'm talking about leadership that, that was so disconnected from their people that they, when they were starving, didn't understand that when they were out of cheap bread that they couldn't get expensive bread. Oh, it's already too quiet in here. (laughs) Let the people eat cake. Hearing millionaires and billionaires saying you should be shut down for a year. I've already told you we're, we're sensitive to the fact that people really do get sick. I've already explained the fact that we understand that we should respect each other.
Listen, I, I, I want to preface a few things. I don't, I don't like conspiracy theory. And I think people ought to calm down with it. I don't think that George, George Soros is the boogeyman behind everything that goes wrong in America, even though he is an evil man, that evil men shall wax worse and worse. I'm not going to stand up here and act like I trust Bill Gates because I don't. Say, preacher, are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure that, that a guy that has made hundreds of billions of dollars off of us, hey, Bill Gates' equipment's running, his technology's running this building right now. It, it's, it's Windows, unfortunately. But after they've made their billions, tell you you ought to do with less. After they've made their hundreds of millions of dollars, tell you that we should, we should not shake hands, that we, we should not go out, that we should be confined to our home for the next year. There's only one way for America to be, to, to be confined to its home for the next year, and that's for the government to begin to be your sustainer and your provider. That's the only way. And those people don't need the government. They've got billions, and they're lying to you. You say, what is, this? what is this you're talking about this morning? The prophet Isaiah said to cry aloud and spare not. There is no, there should be no limits on where the pulpit goes. There should be no limit. The pulpit ought to be the thundering voice in America again that, tell, that calls the people back to God and back to revival and back to a place where we stand on thus saith the Lord and we don't care what the, what the, what the manipulating powerful have to say. There's more power in the pew and in the streets than there ever has been or ever will be in Washington, D.C. And don't you forget it. My grandfather didn't fight in the Battle of the Bulge so that we could roll over to the UN and the World Health Organization. He didn't do that. That's not what he, that's not what he went there for. Let me remind you of about a few things that the Word of God declares. Listen to me closely. See, my politics is not, def my word, my, my, my religion is not defined by my politics. My politics is defined by my religion. And I'm using that word religion in the loosest sense possible. Because the word of God is the guide. You still here? The word of God declares that where the spirit of the Lord is. Somebody finish that. Say it again. Say it again. Sing it louder. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's what? Why has America been the home of the free and the land of the brave? Or the land of the brave and the home of the free? Why? Because the gospel hit its shores and the light of the gospel has went all over the world because of the American pulpit. It, is, it, was, it was the church that made America great. I would tell our president this morning if I had an audience with him, I support him, I'm not against him. I hate what people do to him. But if he wants to make America great again, he'll call America back to the cross. If he wants to make America great again, he'll call America back to the Word of God. If he wants to make America great again, he will get rid of charlatans like Paula White as his, as his advisors and spiritual things and will call in the men and women like Jim Cimbala and Carter Conlon and Franklin Graham, people that stand on the Word of God and will get advice from them. I'm not against him, I support him. But we need, we need godly, word-based counsel going into the White House. What made America great to start with? The blood of people who were looking for liberty, freedom. What made America great to begin with? was a, a little thing called the Black Robe Society. Anybody ever heard of the Black Robe Regiment? Anybody? Anybody in the house? Show me your hand if you've even heard of it. The Black Robe Regiment. 
A few. That tells me something about what's happening in the schools of America. I'm not slamming you, but that tells me what we're not taught. Because we believe that people just showed up on this shore with a desire for freedom and it just happened. A declaration of independence just happened. A, a, a constitution that, was, a, that started with we the people just happened. A President Lincoln that talked about the government of the people, for the people, and by the people just happened. It didn't just happen. And the Black Robe Regiment was a slur given by the British crown to the, to the preachers of the, of, of the new world, of the United States, that, that with thundering voices from the pulpit called the people together and demanded a, a, a freedom and a right to preach and a right to assemble. And I'm going to, let me read just a few things. Can I, is it okay? Is this all right? The Black Robe Regiment was named by the, by the British and uh, uh, about a patriotic American clergy that during the founding era they wore, it was a slight against their black robes that they wore in the pulpit. Many people think that the founding fathers just came up with all the points of, of independence and all the points of constitutional law. When really it came, if you'd have read the sermons of the Black Robe Regiment, you would find that all of the elements that we have today were found in the message from the pulpit, not from the halls of Congress. Even the British Crown acknowledged that the American pulpit was largely responsible for American independence and government. Its own leaders agree, for our own leaders agree. John Adams rejoiced that the pulpits have thundered. Listen, did you hear what I, did you hear who I said? John Adams rejoiced that the pulpits have thundered and specifically identified sp several ministers who were among the characters that most uh, most uh, conspicuous and most ardent and influential in the, uh, the awakening and revival of their American principles and feeling that led to the American independence. Here's, here's listen, to, listen to the difference in media. Are you still here? 1833, as a body of men, the clergy were preeminent in their attachment to liberty. The pulpits of the land rang with the notes of freedom. Another magazine, this is a British magazine. If Christian ministers had not preached and prayed, there might not have been a revolution as of yet. Or had it, been broke, or had it broken out, it would have been crushed. Did you hear it? If not for what? The preachers, the pulpit, standing on the word of God. The ministers of the revolution were, like their Puritan predecessors, bold and fearless in their cause of their country. No class of men contributed more to carry forward the revolution and to achieve the independence than did the ministers. By their prayers, their patriotic sermons and services, they rendered the highest assistance to the civil government, the army, and the country. One last one. Historian Alice Baldwin. The Constitutional Convention and the written Constitution were the children of the pulpit. The Constitutional Convention and the written Constitution were the children of the pulpit. Is it any wonder why for decades now the media and the liberal left of this country, I don't, y'all, I am past caring if that offends somebody because that's the culprits. You will never be able to live free if you don't have truth. And somebody has to be willing to say it. You have to be willing to take the shots. You have to be willing for people to walk out. 
Is it any wonder why they've been trying to convince the church that, well, religion is fine for you. Your Christian faith is fine for you. But keep that at home. Anybody heard that besides me? I mean... Has that been the mantra for decades? Well, that's good for you, but don't impose it on anyone else. I'm going to remind you that it's a direct violation of the Word of God. And the Word of God is the reigning document. What do you mean? The command written in red. Written in red. Go ye to all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Does that sound like share it among your family and keep it in your home? No. No, it doesn't. That's a lie that must be exposed. Church, I don't know how many different ways to call you to the Word of God, but today I continue to call you to the Word of God. Church, now hold on a minute. Hey, I'll talk to anybody after church that wants to talk to me. But I'm going to say it anyway. If you think you can separate your politics from this book, you're deceived. You're deceived. Evil men shall wax worse and worse. Deceived and being deceiving and being deceived. Evil men and imposters. What's the imposters? The imposters is talking about the pulpit. When Paul wrote to Timothy, the evil men could have been anybody, but the imposters were he was talking to the church. And you know what an imposter is? It's someone that comes that comes within to work against you. They're an enemy within. Imposters to the, to the audience that Paul was talking to was, was false ministers and false preachers and false prophets that were evil. That they were bent on destroying the church of Jesus Christ. Deceiving and being deceived. Do you know that you can teach and preach a lie so long that, you, that you're deceived by your own lies? Deceiving and being deceived. You know what that is? That is sowing and reaping. Deceiving and being deceived. Putting it out there, deception, receiving deception back. Do you know that the media, the leftist, crazy, liberal media in this country actually believe the garbage that they're shoving down your throat because they're deceived? You need to hear something. The media was intended to be for the people and to give information to the people, not to pick winners and losers. You say, I, I, this is first Sunday in an old building, preacher, couldn't you preach about heaven? <laughs> couldn't we have sang when the saints go marching in? Come with say, I'm going to walk all around that city with my loved ones who've gone on before. Yeah. But you may tell you something. Preaching peace when God's talking about war is just as rebellion as shaking your fist in his face and telling him that you'll not believe. Y'all didn't catch that. You'll either preach what God says or you're, or you're in direct rebellion with Him. The media of this country was meant to give us information and be the voice for the people to the people from government. Not the ones deciding what you think. Oh, y'all need to work with me just a second. And I'm just going to, I'm, I'm going to be real pastoral for just a second. If you're having to hear the news and then listen to the three hours of punditry and talking heads to telling you what you believe, you've got a problem that's right. If I, 
If I'm in this book, I know in whom I have believed that I am fully persuaded that he, that he is able. If you're not in this book, listen, listen, listen. If you're not in this book, you don't even know what the truth is. Why are pulpits falling for garbage? Why are churches, I'll say this. <laughs> oh, man, I'm about. <laughs> the word of God will never produce a liberal Christian. The word of God will never produce a liberal Christian. Liberal churches produce liberal Christians. I, I'm not, I've not said anything about Republicans and Democrats. Y'all know, know what I'm talking about. You're not foolish. And you're not dumb. The word of God will never produce a liberal Christian that stands up against the things God says are true. Why am I conservative? Now, now, now I need y'all to pay special attention because there's people that actually believe the president told people to drink Lysol and inject bleach. <laughs> so I need you to listen close. I need you to listen close because this, this is a misinformation day and age where people hear what they want to hear. If your politics and your party is more important than the book, you're in trouble. I need to talk about it. Oh, I, I, I know this is charged. I know this. I know this is this is this is electrical. I know that the right people got a hold of this video, this live thing this morning. That I'd that I'd be. I, I just don't know what would happen. I'm. I'm. I'm I made up my mind that I who I work for. I'm trying to find the next rock. Y'all don't know what that means in Texas, do you? I'll explain it to you. See, when I was a kid, when we go out. Roman, back then you could do that. Back then you could go out and play and show up when the street lights came on. And nobody worried about it. But we find ourselves in a shallow stream. You know, we might have been catching crawdads or just falling in the water. Who knows? Well, you know, you start out trying to keep dry and then you just, Mo oh, mama, I just fell in. But you're across that shallow stream, that, that rocky stream, and when they get shallow enough, you, you, there will be dry rock, and you, and you step on one. And maybe this time you're trying to really are trying to get across. And when you, you get on that one, and you step to the next one, and you feel if it's going to move or if it's solid. Okay, a few country people. I'm feeling for the next rock. Because I'm trying to get across this thing. This is what I wanted you to hear and, and, and make sure that you listen closely. When the news outlets begin to report their agenda rather than just the facts, when the media begins to shape people's opinion with their opinion instead of what happened, When they, begin, when they begin to spew misinformation, they, they go from being a friend of the people, the constitutional friend of the people. Somebody say amen. amen. This is what I, to an enemy of the state. Preacher said that the media was the enemy of the state. 
Some are. That's not what the preacher said, though. The preacher said the ones that won't just give you information. The ones that will give you information and tell you the things you need to know so you know what's happening, they're your friend. They're hard to find. Um, they're impossible. The ones that are manipulating and shaping policy and driving agenda is an enemy of the state. And they are definitely an enemy of the church. Cry aloud and spare not. What's that mean? Leave nothing out. Preach salvation, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the soon return of Jesus Christ and the rapture, the millennial reign of Christ. Preach heaven, preach hell, but preach the truth in all areas of life. Cry aloud and spare not. When Paul was at the end of his life, he said, I have spared nothing. I have never really thought about an epitaph until this very second. I promise you. Oh, I think I had to write one in eighth grade, but who in the world knows about an epitaph in eighth grade? Some of you wonder what an epitaph is. It's what they write on your tombstone. Some of you say, what do you want on your tombstone? Well, pepperoni, please. But until this very second, I, I would be honored if my epitaph said he spared nothing. That's an honor. He spared nothing. He loved people enough that he spared nothing. Whether they liked it, didn't like it, it upset them or made them shout. I've seen many a people that left clenched fists mad at what a preacher said, but a few weeks later come in and fell broken at an altar because the Spirit of God quickened the Word of God and it broke the people. Church, I'm here to tell you that His Word is still true. I'm here to tell you that we're going to preach it all. I'm here to tell you that a government has no right to shut churches down. Let me tell you something. I want you to hear me and hear me good. This church did not shut down because Donald Trump or Greg Abbott or anybody else told us to shut down. That was not ever in. There's board members here. Board members say yes or no. Is that true? It never came up in the conversation. Is that right? The conversation was, we don't have enough information on this disease. People are getting very sick. This is what the medical doctors are saying right now. This is all the information we have. And the reasons we shut down were these. Jackie Rogers. Glenn Pitt. Dale Howe. And others. What are you talking about? People that I knew that sat in this building every week that have immune deficiencies or that have had something that happened to them that caused them to have a respiratory uh, uh, deficit. It was never about government orders. It was about people. I will stand here with 100% assurance and look you in the eye and say that we will never bow down to government oppression, but we will protect the people and we'll use the information we have and we're gaining more every day and we will make decisions according to that. You say, well, it's been all about somebody watching my live stream now has either turned me off, they'll be back later because they want to know what I said. You've done that too. You've had people make you so mad that you turned them off, but you got so curious you, had, you come back and listen to the rest of it. Maybe I'm different than you. I've done it. 
<laughs> right now, y'all just impressed I stayed on the stage the whole time. <laughs> Told you. <laughs> well, brother, Pastor Armstrong, these governors are just trying to protect the people. Is that why California's Governor Gavin Newsom put churches reopening in the third phase of, of their steps instead of the first phase? Is that why they can go to Wendy's but they can't go to... I'm pretty convinced they don't let us get our hair cut yet. Don't, Y'all don't notice I have one. You don't see that. I'm, I'm pretty convinced they don't let us have haircuts yet because they know most of the preachers in America are too vain to be seen with shaggy hair. <laughs> Y'all think that's funny, but Norm knows it's true. <laughs> oh, it's, 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 it's not oppression. There's, there's no oppression going on. Is that why the Kentucky, the Kentucky governor wanted license plate numbers? Is that why... <laughs> God help me. Is that why a false prophet named Robert E. Howard Brown was arrested in Florida? I, I wanted to say it all. I, I can't support Rodney Howard Brown in any sh way, shape, form, or fashion other than the media doesn't separate false prophets from, from legitimate preachers. He's just a church to them, so they arrested him. Y'all got six minutes before you're even antsy. <laughs> Actually, that, that clock's two minutes fast. Y'all got seven minutes before y'all are even antsy, so just hang out a minute. odd things going on in me spiritually. I'm surprised at what I say sometimes. <laughs> Most of the times it's not the things that, it's things like this. Things that I don't understand. You know, I remind you back February 5th, I, I, I gave this church an extraordinary warning I know now that our life was about to change and now. Some of you were here and you remember it. I didn't understand then what I was saying. So I, that's just an example. I, I don't, sometimes I don't know what's going on. I just know, all I know is to be obedient. I don't know, I don't know what to do next sometimes, but I just know what he told me now. And that's what he asked of all of us, by the way. So when I say things like, the Lord's been dealing me for, me for weeks to stop preaching like I'm preaching to a local church and start preaching like I'm preaching to the world. I don't know why. I don't even know what that means. But I've learned enough to know that what he says is best. I've lived long enough and served him long enough to know that he understands what I don't. I've, I've taken, I've taken quite, I've never told you the full scope of my path even through the pulpit. I've had to trust him on every step. I've had to look, I've li literally had to look for the next rock every, every step of the way that I never understood. But looking backwards, I can see his hand all along. Church, I don't, I don't know what God's doing in Mauriceville. But he is. I don't even know what's going on all the time, but it's happening. And all I know to do is to follow him. All I know to do is to tell the people what the word of God says. All I know to do is to cry loud and spare not. All I know to, all I know to do is to throw away cookie cutter religion and get back to Bible based Christianity. 
All I know to do is still believe that he's a miracle-working God. All I know to do is that he can still break through the hardness of people's lives that, that shook their hand in his face for decades and still believe that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much and that God can still get through to them. All I know that he saved the worst, as the old song says, he saved the worst among you when he saved a wretch like me. I know what he can do and I know what he's capable of and all I know to do is to to follow the one that's trustworthy. I'm going to tell you, I, I, I'm, fairly, I'm pretty convinced it won't always be easy. It won't, I'm pretty convinced it won't always be easy for you to tell people you go to church here. What, I'm tell what am I saying? I'm not being funny now. When you stand for truth, it's going to draw the devils out of the woodwork. Can I tell on myself? You know, you know I'm going to. Because there's a time for everything. Y'all know Ecclesiastes. You've been to plenty of funerals. You know Ecclesiastes. <laughs> Ecclesiastes tells you that there's time for everything. Time to plant, time to reap, time to, right? It's in Ecclesiastes, it's a book in the Bible. <laughs> Old Testament, Solomon wrote it. We're in extraordinary time. I'm talking about these extraordinary times we live in and people standing up and believing the word of God again and treating each other with respect and standing for truth and all those times, and there's come, there, but there's a time for everything. And I, and I can see there's a spiritual warfare happening. Hello? I've told you for a year everything's spiritual. It manifests in ways like this. Because see, y'all remember in the Word of God when, when Jesus had cast out some demons from some people. And the Pharisees said he cast out demons by the power of Beelzebub. The enemy casting out the enemy. Right. And Jesus made it, he said, a house divided against itself cannot stand. That's not, I'm not talking about American history right now where it said, where it said united we stand, divided we fall. I'm talking about written in red. He said, a house divided against itself cannot stand. That can be a household, that can be the house of God, that can be a country, that can be, a, that can be the Jewish nation, that can be the Christian church, it can be a house divided against, no, stay with me. A house divided against itself cannot stand. All these manipulators, evil men and imposters that are waxing worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived, it's happening before your eyes and this is how it manifests. Are you ready? Here it goes. You may be ashamed of your preacher, I don't know. But I go to Lowe's nearly every day. We had revival on aisle 16 last week because there was 47 people. <laughs> Most people I'd seen in a group in a while, so I took a text. No. No, I was just standing in the appliance department respecting people's space. Which I, I kind of like that part. <laughs> I kind of like people not in my face in the store. I'm okay with that. I'll shake your hand. I'll hug your neck. But I don't know you. You can. Your breath stinks. <laughs> Here's a mint. By the way, never turn down a mint. There's no special offering for that. That's just good advice. <laughs> never turn down a mint. If somebody offers you one. That's just FYI. If anybody offers me a bit after service, I'm going <laughs> to... But I'm in the appliance department in Lowe's just needing to ask a simple question. And there was a young man at Port Arthur Lowe's. I went to his register for a reason. It's a young black boy over there, black man. He's early 20s and does a superb job. Great, I love customer service. 
He will flat take care of you. So I was waiting on him for a reason. I could have found four, 47 other people and found one of them in between the 47 that knew the answer, but I, or I could go to him and wait. It would take about the same amount of time. So I was waiting. And he was dealing with this lady. And I want you to get the, Can you visualize with me? Can you play like? Can you pretend? Are you here? She had a mask on. It was homemade, leather straps and cloth. But that's not the point. It was on her ears, hanging by her ears, just like this. Not like this. And certainly not like this. It was like this. Actually, it was more like this. And while she's being waited on, there's a, there's a young mother with a cart and had two little guys in it that they were so, it, it was Corbin and Preston. It wasn't Corbin and Preston, literally. It was their age and their cuteness level. Two little boys in their cart. She's as far away from me as Ruth is and her. She's over there. Are you with me? You got to see this. And as she's discussing with the guy waiting on her, she says, What's she doing in here with her kids? Sir, what's she, what's she doing in here with her kids? It's supposed to be one per household. And I'm thinking, Keep me sweet, Jesus. And the young man says, well, ma'am, under the guidelines, a single mother, a single father with their small children are allowed to bring them in the store. They can't leave them in the car. Because, you know, three years ago, we, we called the police on people that locked their kids in the car. And rightfully so. And I let that pass. In fact, I tried to change the tone of the conversation. I don't know if that was wise or not, but I tried. I said, well guys, the good thing about it is, is in two days, these restrictions will be loosened up and it won't be quite so tense. That's what I said, just like that. To which she whirled around to me and she stuck her finger out with her mask under her chin. and said to me, you need a mask on. <laughs> to which your pastor replied, you need to mind your business and shut up. <laughs> Y'all, I think if Jesus had been standing there, at that garden tomb, I'd have said it anyway. And I was ashamed of myself, just a, but only a little. Not very much. And I told you all that to tell you that that's the fruit of a divided house. When strangers are willing to scold and rebuke strangers while their hypocritical self. <laughs> Just as another free object lesson, this is exactly what Matthew 7 means when it says, Judge not lest you be judged. Remove the, the beam from your own eye lest you talk about the speck in your neighbor's eye. That's exactly what it's talking about, just so you know. government feeding you what they want you to hear stoking fear and dividing people telling you not to work for months billionaires saying this may be this way for two more years let them eat cake you are seeing 
a revolution. Not the good kind yet. I pray the good kind happens. You're seeing the tentacles of socialism where the wealthy class dictate the lower class. Where the, where the people that who will never want tell the people that need what they need and when they need it. Don't ever forget that what a government can give you, a government can take away. I want to remind you of something this morning that you need to hear, unless you think I'm just a political firebrand, which I'm not. For one thing, a wingnut is a wingnut. It doesn't matter if it's a left wing nut or a right wing nut. Or as Barney Fife would say, a nut's nut. And he's, he's nuts. So we ought to nip it. Your right to be here wasn't given to you by the government. Your right to be here for me to stand here and proclaim the word of God and to rail against oppression and deception was not given to me by the government. You were endowed with certain inalienable rights by who? Somebody by your Creator. Why has America been great? How can it be great again? When the light of the gospel is its brightest. Thank you, musicians, for coming back. I already mentioned that where the Spirit of the Lord is there is freedom why has America enjoyed the greatest freedom ever seen in human history where the Spirit of the Lord is there is freedom what I'm talking about church if you put a globe up in front of me and spun it around and put your finger on a country if you will tell me how much gospel is there I'll tell you how free they are did you hear that? Where there's much gospel, there's much freedom. Where there's m less gospel, there's less freedom. Where there's little gospel, there's little freedom. What is, here, example, there's still an underground church in China that's thriving. They have little, God, there's six billion people, maybe 200 million, maybe 200 million Christians. That's a lot of Christians, but not in comparison with the four billion people or whatever it is there. Are you with me still? Little freedom, little gospel. No gospel, no freedom. So will I be quiet and keep my mouth shut about governors, presidents, politics, media, deceiving, lying, kingdom-building preachers? No, I will not. What you do with it is up to you. If you apply it to your own life, I believe that the Lord is looking for, the Holy Spirit is asking for the church to stand up again. I believe He's calling men and women both back to pulpits and giving them a platform. I'm not talking about a platform. I'm talking about a Ex giving them exposure he's going to get his truth out there yes church it's time it's time for the church to be the church to quit rolling over at every bully that comes down the pike 
I'm not telling you to be mean or hateful or start fights. I talked to somebody about me telling the lady to shut up and mind your business. And they said, well, you didn't hit her. It was a preacher. He said, that's self-control, right? That's a fruit of the Spirit, right? So who knew about that? Well, I'll remind you of a time that Jesus stood over in the corner and fashioned a whip. He didn't pick one up. He took time to make one. It wasn't a spur of the moment. It wasn't a flash of anger. It wasn't, it wasn't a, a loss of self-control. He stood over, the Word of God says, and fashioned a whip. And then he went into where the deceivers and the looters and the money changers were and drove them out of his house. And one guy said, that doesn't sound like love to me. And I say, I believe he loved every minute of it. Because he done it twice. Go look in your Bible, he done it twice. And I remind you that he said, be angry and sin not. It's possible. Stand with me this morning across this place. What are we singing? <laughs> if you could pull it up, you probably can't pull it up that quick. Hallelujah. Church. God's not done with you, with this church, or with this country. He's not done. But it's going to require people to, to get their backbone back. It's going to require them standing on the Word of God. Don't you try it alone. You'll get your, you'll get your clock cleaned. But if God be for you, who can be against you? I'm going to remind you at the end of all of this that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. He's not lost any power or any ability or any, or he's not lost anything. But the church has, and he's calling this church back up.